Good evening and welcome to worship this evening as we continue in our midweek Lenten series, Jesus as the Conquering Warrior. It's truly sad that we can't be gathering here. Our midweek services had gathered 300, 400 here to worship, but because of what's going on in, in society and out of love for, for our neighbor, it is necessary for us to come to you virtually to bring God's word to you and may it be a blessing to you this evening and to your family. This is, this is what we do in times of unknown, in times of fear. We gather together and we, we gather with each other and God's word. It's our time to be comforted and to get the spiritual guidance that we need. We'll begin our worship this evening with the singing of the opening hymn that directs our attention to who Jesus is as our warrior. We begin with hymn 102, Enslaved by Sin and Bound by Chains. Worship continues with the opening canticle and evening hymn. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, 
we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, and in all that we have not done. Forgive us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver and restore us, that we may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. Let us rest in his peace until the rising of the sun, when we shall serve him in newness of life. Amen. Amen. Our service continues with the singing of the sermon hymn, Christ the Lord of Hosts Unshaken, as we see who we are doing battle against and we see who, the one who comes and conquers in our place. Christ the Lord of Hosts Unshaken by the devil's seeming rage towards the plan of Satan's minions wins the strife from age to age conquers sin and death forever slams them in their steely cage Jesus came this word fulfilling trampled Satan death defied for the brunt of our temptation on the wretched tree he died yet to life was raised victorious by his life our life supplied god's grace his mercy his peace are yours through our lord and our Savior who conquers, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God we look to comes to us in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, where our real enemy is revealed. Now, right now, if you'd wonder what the enemy we face is, you'd say it's a virus, right? It's something that can't be seen. It's something that can't be heard, not easily detected. But there's something far more dangerous, someone far more dangerous, that is after us, who is our real enemy, not just even in life, but, but heaven or hell lies in the balance. Our real enemy is revealed by the Apostle Paul. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This is God's word. Recently, I was proofreading a paper my daughter was writing for history class on the Red Baron. And it's interesting, before he became known as the Red Baron, the one that all those who faced him in the air feared, he really had his career in aviation doing reconnaissance. He started out just flying over enemy lines, and in those days there wasn't much they could do against planes. And he would just go and he'd spot where the enemy was, what they were doing, and give valuable information back to his comrades so they knew how to attack and what they were dealing with, how deep the lines of battle were, how they got their supplies. Reconnaissance was crucial so they knew how to attack and, and what they were facing. Reconnaissance is a theme we want to talk about this week too because God has done reconnaissance about our real enemy. And it's not whether or not the economy is going to collapse. It's, it's not a, a virus that comes undetected. It's not the fears that come around us. It's, it's one who rebelled against God. It's, it's one who was cast out of heaven. It's one whose sole purpose now is to lead us astray from God. It's the devil. And the reconnaissance that's been done is shown clearly in God's word. We learn two things about our enemy that's crucial, crucial information for victory. First, this is how our enemy is described. Be alert and of sober mind, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. It's kind of startling when you think about it, that our enemy isn't idle. 
He doesn't sit and wait and hope you come into one of his traps. He is out there prowling and looking and watching and observing and finding any way that he can to isolate you or to get you away from the protection that comes with being close to your God. Just like in the nature shows, what does the lion go for? He goes for the one that is unattentive. He goes for the one that you can tell uh, doesn't have the strength to, to run away. He goes for the one that's weak. He goes for the easiest target. Our enemy is a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Something else we learn about our enemy when we do reconnaissance, as God describes it, is, is this. You belong to your father, the devil, and you do want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. It's another thing we learn about our enemy. He lies. He doesn't tell the truth. He uses whatever tools, whatever tricks, whatever way that he can use to get you to listen. His goal is, is not just to confront you with a lie and think that you're going to believe it wholeheartedly. His, his goal is to just chip away, to be patient, to, to mix lies with the truth, to make lies more palatable, to get you focused on other things, to say this is more important or that's more crucial. You need to rely on this and, and definitely not that. He gets these lies coming into you that, that actually a part of you feeds on. Lies that, that this world is, is so important and the goals of this world are, are what we cling to and what we strive for. And he comes to the, with a barrage of, of it can come through what we listen to and what we watch, what we see on TV. It, it can come through just the own, our own thoughts and worries because of our sinful nature. The devil prowls. And, and he, he comes after us with, with these lies. And what lies in the balance, it's not just that we make a mistake or for a moment we follow a wrong path or we, 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 we sin and, and it's not a big deal. What lies in the balance is, is eternities. The devil is not done until he has dragged us away. The devil is not done until he's succeeded and bring us into his midst. The, the lion is not done until he has his prey. But then we learn of someone who comes in our place, someone who wages war and does battle. The one who did the reconnaissance and reveals this to us is the one who actually comes and does the fighting in our place. It's amazing when you see our warrior Jesus coming and it seems like he's this gentle shepherd watching his sheep. But he knows how the devil works. He knows what the devil does. He sees this roaring lion and he knows what he needs to do. He'll stand in the place of his sheep, even give his life to make sure the roaring lion cannot touch a one of them. And that's what our Savior does. This Lenten season, isn't that our focus? The one who comes in our place to, to do the battle that we can't do, to win the war that, that we can't win, to, to stand in our place, to make sure that nothing, no one, gets in the way of our relationship with him because he has come to save. There's something else that our Savior does to do battle against the devil. That other tool is, is the lie. He comes and gives us the truth. Nothing but the truth. When he speaks, it, it's the truth that, that also carries with it the power of God. When Jesus speaks the truth, it has to happen. That's the kind of power he has. He, he, he comes to, to, to heal those that are hurt, and he says, be healed, and, and then they are healed. He, he comes to feed the hungry, and he says, be fed, and, and multitudes are fed. He, he comes to calm the storm, and he says, be still, and, the, and the, the storm is stilled. He comes to give life, and he says to the dead, rise, and they get up. That's the power of God's word, which is at your disposal. And that's the truth that we are given. It's, it's found in God's word. The same thing Jesus used to rout the devil, the truth of God's word, is the same tool he gives to you to rout the devil. The truth and not the lie. 
But then we have one who comes to do battle in our place. He knows the stakes. And, and his love has determined that he will save us. He is the good shepherd that comes and makes sure that no one harms the sheep. To know that we have one watching over us, that nothing will get in the way of his salvation, his plan for us, and he will do battle with whoever comes, whether it's the roaring lion, he will stand in the way, and he'll take that on too. If it means his death, then he will die. Isn't that why we come here at Lent? To see the Savior taking the steps that needed to be taken to save us? And so he does. He shuts the jaws of that roaring lion, and he comes with another way to do battle that we can embrace too. He comes with the truth, the truth of his word. We can rely on everything he says. We don't have to worry about whether this is accurate or that's accurate. When Jesus speaks, it is the truth. And that truth also comes with power. Think of the power of, of God's word. God himself says, I am the power between this word. And we see how Jesus used it. The one who is the word that became flesh. He, he came to this world and, and when there was sickness, he said, be healed. And they were healed. When there was hunger, he said, be fed, and thousands were fed. When there was danger that was around, when the winds blew, he said, be still, and the calm came on the storm. When Jesus faced death, he said, get up, and Lazarus stood. This is the power of the one who has come as your Savior. This is the truth of his word, and all his promises you can trust in. So in the days ahead, when, when the devil comes tempting with his lies and his fears, can you hear the truth of Jesus speaking? Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. That's the truth of his word. When worries and fears about whether or not we're going to have enough food or have enough of money or we'll lose our job, Jesus says, my children will never be left in want. And when things creep into our lives and sickness ensues, do we not have one that comes to us and speaks, us, speaks true words? If you need to be healed, be healed. And if we even face death, Jesus says, everyone who believes in me will live even though he dies. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. This is the truth. Your Savior comes with power. He hasn't just done battle with the one we face the roaring lion, he's actually won. That's the amazing thing about the truth of Jesus. He doesn't just reveal who our enemy is, what our enemy does, that he's defeated our enemy. We already know the end. Jesus comes with this truth too. Not only do we have victory now, but a guarantee of victory forever with him in heaven. Jesus is your Savior. He's done the reconnaissance, he's fought the battle, he's won the war. And you can take his word on that. Amen. We continue now with the offering. And obviously we're not able to gather an offering this evening. But the ministry here at St. Paul still continues. And the ministry still can be supported you're given opportunity online or through the website to give. Or if you'd like to take your offering and put it in the mail, you can simply mail to the church and it will be used to carry on the vital ministry here. Our service continues with the singing of the prayer canticle. Let us pray. 
Dear Savior and Victor, we are living in a time with so many scary unknowns and our enemy, the devil, is on the prowl. May the truth of your word and the power of your promises give us the weapons we need to fight off our fears, identify the devil and his lies, and renew our confidence in your absolute victory on our behalf. For you dwell with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the singing of the Lord's Prayer. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we might watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. The Closing Canticle In peace, Lord, in peace, you let your servant now depart, according to The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Amen. The closing hymn verse, Christ the Lord of hosts, unshaken. Jesus, send your angel when the foe would us enslave, hold us fast when sin assaults us. Come then, Lord, your people say, overthrow at last the dragon, send him to his fiery We thank you for worshiping with us this evening. We are in new territory here, not only as a country, but as a congregation too. Um, we thank the production crew for putting, making this possible that we could come virtually to you. Our goal throughout all of this, as long as it takes, is to continue to bring you God's word. That's what we need to do, to gather together and focus on God's word and his promises. Not only to give comfort to us, but in a time of need like this, as we help and assist our neighbor, that we would be equipped and emboldened to share that truth and that comfort with others too. May God bless us in these days ahead as we continue to serve you on Sundays and midweek Wednesdays and as many other opportunities as we can, we can to offer uh, God's word to you and your family. I'd like to just show the, those the quartet that helped with the singing this evening.
Sunday worship will be coming to you in the same format. And may God bless us all. And may we remember as we leave this evening that our names are written in the palm of his hands.